You know, if you look in the last 20 to 30 years, PMCs have been growing at an exponential rate. You know, extractive industries, oil companies hire them, mining companies, billionaires hiring them. And you're seeing also private CIAs, private intelligence firms, and they work, they can work very closely with these private military companies. We're getting to the, the point where anybody who has enough money can swipe a check and rent a private army. A billionaire, a, a Fortune 500 company, they could wage war for any reason they want, no matter how petty or how weird. A former British colony, Le Mans gained its independence in 1948, but was ravaged by a brutal civil war 20 years later when the remnants of the anti-British resistance known as Seoul, Sons of Le Mans, were dissatisfied with the independent government's rule. Since the official army was understaffed, untrained, and equipped with outdated weapons and gear, it was swiftly defeated after only two months of fighting. The Seoul commander, Raksmi Sayavong, then declared himself the supreme leader of the island with the title of president. Roxmi's victory was made possible thanks to the help of the Soviets, who supplied Seoul with weapons in exchange for strengthening their position during the Vietnam War. Building various military installations all over Le Mang, a small contingent of Soviet troops remained on the island even after the end of the conflict and finally left after the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991. Roxmi Sayavong died in a car accident in 1996 with his only son, the 28-year-old Narith Sayavong becoming the new leader of the island. Narith promised the people of Lemang that he would end his late father's isolationism policies and bring the island into the next millennium through modernization and openness. With the financial support of the Soviet Union gone, he claimed to focus on tourism instead and ordered the construction of his crowning jewel, the Midnight Sapphire, a luxurious resort where, legend has it, all was allowed for the right price. During the next three decades, those few who managed to escape the island told a vastly different story and pleaded with the rest of the world for their help until finally the UN decided to act and established the UNLRA, United Nations Lemang Relief Agency, to provide at least a modicum of assistance to the oppressed people. With Nari's hesitant approval, UNLRA arrived in Lemang to assess the situation and begin its humanitarian mission. Then, a few months later, a disaster struck. With a blinding flash and thunderous roar, a part of the island was forever transformed by a sudden cataclysmic event.